everyone, I'm Rubina. And I'm Layla. Welcome back to our channel. Nope. So, no, to yep. I'm glad I just <laughs> this time. Okay. This gave me, this gave me, now I'm, I'm have to remember what I want to say. Okay. okay. You, you, now I know what I'm saying, ready? you know what you're saying, we're good. We're, we good, we good. Okay. And I'm Layla. Welcome back to our segment, Superfood Sleuths. Where we investigate the health food aisle. Today we're going to talk about activated charcoal. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss one of our videos. Activated charcoal, so that blew up last four years, yeah, I think. Yeah, everything is black now. Ice Cream, cream juices, juice, um, puddings, and everything. pills. It's interesting because activated charcoal does not sound like something you want to put in your body. There's so many crazy claims about it, but maybe we'll talk about what it is first, first of all. Yes, activated charcoal is, as charcoal kind of implies, is carbon and it's processed in such a way with heat to create lots of pores in it. So just like you have pores in your skin, these pores are little holes on the surface of the carbon. And that increases the surface area of it. So it can like grab on to all these different things and like store it in its pores. And like, it's just really good at like holding on to stuff. It has some good applications and it has some so we'll get into that today. So it is used in industrial settings for things like water filtration and stuff because you know as Ayla said it's very porous and can kind of bind and hold on to a lot of different things including things in water that you want to pull out of water so mm -hmm. that you can consume it. As we mentioned there's a lot of black stuff out there now like toothpaste and black charcoal skincare masks. Talking about skin stuff I saw an Instagram post the other day where it was claiming that this charcoal skin product mm -hmm. can detan your face and reduce pigmentation. And I Something. did not enjoy seeing that. No, first of all, if we're gonna use pseudoscience for something, can it not be racism or like colorism? And it, I felt like it was implying that the pigment in darker skinned individuals can be, like pulled out. Can be pulled out as if it's dirt or something. That's Weird dumb. implication of that pseudoscience. I did not, not enjoy. enjoy. That is very interesting. I've never seen that before. I have heard people make claims of like, it's like a magnet for your pores. It just pulls everything out. Yes, I've seen stuff about it being like a deodorant as well. But okay, I hate when I get that white stuff. Oh, can you imagine having this like black on all of your stuff. It's not gonna jive with our society's beauty standards, I feel. No. I have used a charcoal toothpaste. I know like actually even charcoal is like so popular, like Crest I think now has like mm. a charcoal toothpaste. But I was like staying with my friend and she had a charcoal based toothpaste. And it was very interesting. Yeah. I know that's a very popular product, yeah. but something about putting black stuff on your teeth and scrubbing it in just feels very so, uncomfortable. It looks so funny though. In the mirror, you're like, mm. the pigment is so strong. I also got like a little jar of activated charcoal powder and like when I opened it up, I was like, oh my god, this is beautiful. Like, I know, like, she was like standing away from me and she's like, oh my god, this is beautiful. And I was like, wait, what? It's How could it be so beautiful? Black. It, it actually, it looks so soft. It looks very soft. too. All the pores, you All the know. pores. Okay, so we just said a whole bunch of things, but this is a nutritional channel, so like, what are we talking about? What does this have to do with nutrition? nutrition. It's in a lot of food products now, but we should talk about how activated charcoal is used in a medical sense. And actually, it's been used in medicine for a very, very long time. It was at one time seen as like the cure-all, like the medicine. A universal the antidote. And it was because of that idea that like grabbing on to stuff. Even now, activated charcoal is still used in medicine. And you know, that universal antidote doesn't quite get there, but it is used as a kind of form of like antidote or antitoxin, if you will. However long ago, it was found that, you know, if people ingested some poisonous substance, that, you know, activated charcoal in the digestive tract is able to bind to certain substances like poisons or toxins or gases. And by binding to it, it basically prevents your body from actually absorbing that poison or toxin into your body and causing harm. So it ends up staying in the digestive tract and you ultimately end up excreting it in your feces. What was the video that you were talking, where you said like, you know, about how people don't consider the digestive tract 
part as an inside of your body yeah like i feel this is a really good example because it's like when the toxin is in your digestive tract it's okay but it's only what's absorbed that's the issue because your digestive tract is basically just like one long mm -hmm. hole from like here to here there is a very legitimate and practical use for activated charcoal to keep people safe and healthy but somehow this kind of got blown into this weird like supplement and food additive uh -huh. thing where people now take it on a regular basis because they're so concerned about all the environmental toxins and pollutions and all the additives and foods like sugar is just gonna kill us all. So we gotta take activated charcoal to, to stop those detoxify <laughs> us. Oh, apparently it's a hangover cure. I saw oh, that on Instagram too. Okay. So full disclosure, the company that makes this, I used to work there when I was in my undergrad. And that's how they used to market this drink. It was like, oh, it's perfect for a hangover or take activated charcoal. But the funny thing is, is that A, activated charcoal doesn't bind alcohol very well. If at all, there's kind of like, there's some debate. But also like when you have a hangover, that's like the processed alcohol by your liver. Isn't it acetaldehyde? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In your body doing stuff, like in your body. So that charcoal would have to like go through into your intestines, into your bloodstream and do stuff, which is like the whole point of it is like to not go into your body, you know? The symptoms of hangovers are multifactorial. Yeah. Like one of them is dehydration. So drinking. And I mean, perhaps the fact that this is a fluid might be, you know, something there, but beyond that. You know, like they used to like full tell people, be like, oh yeah, like come get this for your hangover. It's like, it's so good, blah, blah, blah. I don't know why you worked at this place, girl. Honestly, it was very <laughs> interesting. It was a very interesting place. It's always good to know what the other side it's is like, saying. Exactly. You know, keep exactly. your enemies closer and yeah. All that. <laughs> I think like people applying the legitimate medical use of activated charcoal to just like how they sh people should supplement their daily lives. I think that often comes from just a general misunderstanding of what a toxin really is. Yes. Toxins is very well defined and there's like a few like different like working groups of like toxin people and they have a very clear definition that a toxin is something that is produced by a biological thing. A living organism. A living, living organism that causes harm when ingested. It's not a label that you slap on anything that you don't like. That you, that you think might maybe be harmful in some kind of or way. Or that make you a little less healthy. Like I feel like there's people who are like, Cheetos are toxic yeah. or whatever. <laughs> and it's like, okay, there is debate on whether it's good for your health or not, but like, like the i read this statement by some like u.s toxin group and they're like the definition of toxin has not changed guys it's like kind of the fact that activated charcoal is used for poisonings and toxicity of things in a medical setting and people are like we are surrounded by toxins for example like if you have certain metal toxicity if you they might use activated charcoal to bind that so it doesn't go into your body but not for refined sugar it's worth noting too that even in that legitimate medical setting it's it can only be used in very certain contexts mm. like one of them being that you ingested that poisonous toxin within the hour exactly like it needs to be in your stomach at the same time so it can mix together and like bind it because if too much time has passed then there's a good chance that your body's already absorbed a good chunk of that poisonous substance and then, you know, the, the likelihood of any remaining impact of the activated charcoal is probably not clinically significant at that point. They have very strict guidelines on what toxins they use it for, how much to give, what type. Um, it's always done under medical supervision. Really, activated charcoal is a medication intended for medical use and somehow it's just escaped. Mm -hmm. escaped the medical world and is now with us in this lemonade and you know it's not like oh well we're just drinking charcoal because it's fine it's fine whatever it's black if that's the case do it up it looks cool that's fine but you know there actually is a few risks of taking activated charcoal and i think that this is actually probably one of the riskiest ones of all the superfood sleuths that we've done in that first and foremost from a nutritional perspective i'll start there it absorbs many minerals and nutrients that are in food. If you're taking it, it to could be counterproductive to your health goals, is what we're saying. Exactly. This brand has like a black charcoal superfood green juice that costs like some crazy exorbitant amount of money. But I just imagine that all the charcoal is in there, like grabbing onto all the nice like chlorophyll mm -hmm. and all the other like 
vitamin C that's in there. So you're probably just drinking this and pooping out all the good stuff from like the kale and whatever else is in that green juice. Even in this, like it's like, it says the ingredients are water, lemon, lime, ginger, maple syrup, and activated charcoal. It's like twofold in that the charcoal is probably already busy Binding. being bound to a lot of these yeah. components. So it's preventing you from getting those nutrients. But also if it's already bound to a bunch of things, is it going to actually remove the quote unquote toxins. toxins? Which is probably a good thing. The reason that it could be a good thing is because activated charcoal can actually bind to things like medicine as mm -hmm. well. Like things that you're ingesting because you want to absorb it. Things like oral contraceptives, hypertension medications, statin medications, which is used for people who have high like blood lipids. These medicines that you take on a daily, daily basis. basis, especially if you're taking, you know, close to the time that you're taking activated charcoal, you could be compromising the efficacy of those drugs. If there's like legitimate concern about a poison or toxin entering your body, and if there's legitimate concern about toxicity and harmful effects, a doctor is probably necessary to be involved in your care. Don't go to your health food store, call poison control, call 911. That should be plan A. Activated charcoal, plan... I mean, I said... Also, as per usual, it can also be digestive repercussions. repercussions. It can cause constipation, diarrhea, cramping. Like You know the list. You know the list of things. <laughs> also, it turns your poop black. Which is a little unsettling, but... Probably not a huge deal. Not a huge deal, but I guess it can maybe be confused with if you have upper intestine, mm. GI bleeding, sorry, upper or GI bleeding, so like bleeding from your stomach, it turns your poop black. So maybe like if you get confused. I, I mean, I, I know that's a very low risk. Yeah. That's a risk we don't I, I started eat. eating beets a couple of weeks <laughs> ago and there was a moment of panic the next day. Very but familiar then, with that. Yes. Very familiar with that. And I was like, no, no, we're okay. Beets. <laughs> we're okay. <laughs> the beets. But you know, it's like, you know, you're not really getting anything. No, correct. Uh, you know, beets are great. Beets, they have yeah. like anthocyanins in them. They're, They're delicious. delicious. Love beets. I love beets. Charcoal doesn't taste like anything. And it costs a lot. Yeah. For some but on that this note, has been purchased. So we are gonna. We are gonna drink it. And you know what? I think it might taste good because it's mostly like what? Like a ginger lemonade? Almost? Yeah. Like, I'm, I think it's gonna taste really good. I think so too. I think this is the one that I didn't get to try when I was working at this. Ah, place. okay. Should we give it a little like. Ooh. Okay. You know what? I'll, okay. I'll let you do that. Because yeah, the, the charcoal is like settling on the bottom. Oh, oh what? It's it's like. It's oh shit! Do you need a paper towel? Yeah. It's oh, paper towel. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> okay. I'll have to catch it. Okay. I don't. Can I, I'm excited. I feel like this will taste good. We'll clean up that. We, we will. We will. So this is straight up black. Uh huh. Texture of water, I'd say. Mmm, it smells really good. The texture as in consistency See? of water. It smells good. I really like it. You don't like it? It smells like lemonade with ginger in it. I'm not getting, I'm not getting <laughs> a huge amount of smell. And the mm. little bit that I'm getting smells kind of not perfumey, but like not, it doesn't smell good in a food, like oh, edible enough. kind okay. of way. It's so fascinating. Like our, our brains process Things smells so differently from each I, other. Yeah. It's so weird. Are we drinking We're it? We're drinking it. Cheers. Yes. Cheers. All right, good luck. It's okay. It's actually not as good as I thought it was going to be. It's very, it's like lime. Yeah. It's very strong lime And it flavor. does have a grittiness to it. It has, oh. Mm. oh, it's actually very smooth to me. If you like chew, like chew it, put your teeth together. It's liquid, what? how are you chewing it? The granules, the charcoal is in there, I promise. You know what's funny, like, I think I almost like trained myself to limit exposure of like food and beverages to my teeth. Oh. Cause I'm so concerned about my teeth. Well maybe this might be the one to put on your teeth. It's not bad. It's actually not bad. It's kind of nice the more I drink it. Actually, it's quite refreshing. It's very I refreshing. But <laughs> it is like a lime aid almost. Yeah, right? it's like a lime aid. It's not too sweet too. And as it's it not good... too sweet. I kind of like it to be honest. I'm missing me too. I'm really surprised. I'm surprised too. Are we gonna rate first or? Yeah, yeah let's, let's rate, rate it. it. Okay. Appearance. I think it's kind of cool in a way. It is cool, and I think it's part of its 
allure is the fact that it looks so differently than any yeah. other food or beverage that you ever come across. When it comes in like a cool package like that, or there like is the some... ice cream with the yeah. swirl. I def I've had the truffle ice cream before. Have you? Yeah, it doesn't. It just tastes like ice cream. It's just for the Instagram It's just photo. for the gram, yeah. Do it for the gram. Do it for the gram. So it's just the novelty factor, I think. I think so. But maybe I am I fall for the gimmicky things, but I would, I would give this like a seven out of 10. Okay, I'll give it a 10. You know what? I think it's really cool looking. You know what? I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10 too. It is staining nice. ev everything. It's That's like, okay. The smell. The smell was fine. It was very mild to me. Okay. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that it smelled good to me, mm -hmm. but it didn't smell bad. It just didn't sm smell like a whole lot. And the little bit of notes that I was getting smelled almost more floral. I wasn't getting the lemon or lime, which oh, okay. was weird because the taste was so just, strong. I was getting a little ginger, a little like citrus. Maybe I you have a better know. palate than I do. Nose Maybe. palate. <laughs> but it wasn't an offensive smell by no. any means. I could also give it a seven. Oh, interesting. Okay, I was gonna, I, I think I'd say a six. Okay, all right, fair. Taste. Taste. Okay, first sip or like overall thoughts? Overall thoughts. Okay. Overall thoughts. Keep that in mind, yeah. Bert. <laughs> you know what? I find it very refreshing as a beverage. Very refreshing. I actually want to keep drinking it, to I be mean, honest. Well. I'll say seven out of 10. In the comparison of like other juices slash lemonades, mm -hmm. I would give it an eight. Okay. I, I quite like it. It's not too sweet. Well, maybe it could be a little sweet. Maybe a little bit. I think I did say that when I first tried it. Yeah. But I think once I have the tune to it, it was good. But yeah, maybe just like a touch more of the maple syrup. I agree. I think the first sip, the, the lime kind of punches you in the face mm -hmm. a little bit. But then once you are like, okay, this is what it is, then it's enjoyable. Very much so. But we like it. But none of that was influenced by the activated charcoal. I think that it's a at, at best misleading. At worst, it's a little bit of a stretch, but potentially dangerous slash could make people believe something that's dangerous. We were kind of chatting about this earlier with, you know, activated charcoal being used in food and beverage products like this. Mm. I feel like if it was having the impact of absorbing things in your digestive tract, if it actually had a tangible impact, I yeah. feel like they would be required to, to like put, put out, some kind of warning. Put some type of warning. Because it is potentially dangerous. Because it, it could harm people that are on medications. medications. That's just my own thought. Yeah, that's I don't, my thought too. I don't know. But I think like if you think of the action of it and it's like mixed with so many different yeah. things like I just I, I agree with that and you know it is used as a water filtration agent so in a beverage like would it just be taking everything out of the water into the charcoal but I'm sure I'm pretty sure that in the amounts in here that is in here and the way that it's mixed together it's not harmful my guess is that it's not harmful it's not beneficial it's just a gimmick gimmicks are fun sometimes novelty is it's fun. fun so I think the moral of the story is don't take activated charcoal <laughs> unless you have been poisoned or... Any poisoned. medical professional feels it's the it's best, best course of action. action. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. And follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Thanks for watching. Bye! Bye.